Hello, I'm Machimikos. Welcome back to World Talks, where every word matters. After Joe Biden decided to drop out of the presidential campaign, it seems almost certain his party will replace the incumbent president with Kamala Harris in the race for the White House. And to talk about the fast-changing dynamics of American politics and to opposite, vi opposite visions of the future, we're joined by uh, Tomasz Pudowski, Associate Professor at the University of Economics and Human Sciences in Warsaw. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for accepting our invitation. So on one hand, we have uh, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, uh, politicians uh, who vote so quickly and the war in Ukraine and uh, would um, rather focus on the U.S. interests in the um, Pacific region. And on the other, uh, most probably uh, Kamala um, uh, Harris, a staunch supporter of uh, the Ukrainian uh, cause. So the question here is, will uh, these differences pay, uh, um, will these um, differences play an important role in uh, in the presidential campaign this year, or will rather voters concentrate on uh, the U.S. domestic issues? So what's your take on that? Well, historically speaking, if we look at campaigns in most countries, actually, voters focus on domestic issues, maybe with the exception of small states that always have to pay close attention to, what the, to the world around them, mostly for security issues. But the U.S. being a, a global uh, power, uh, historically speaking, voters in the U.S. make their choices based on domestic issues, on economic issues, on um, cultural issues, um, even such as abortion still, so many decades after Roe and Wade, this issue is still uh, a hot-button issue for many voters. There's a strong difference between pro-choice and pro-life voters there's obviously uh, the candidacies the candidates the personalities of the candidates and there's very strong partisan um, uh, tendencies in the electorate so regardless of what happens for example in a debate uh, and we're talking about the dis disastrous debate for biden we didn't see large shifts in the electorate precisely Most it was it was still something like 43 to 41 percent uh, 43 for, for Donald Trump, 41 uh, for uh, Joe Biden, right? Even after after the the debate you just mentioned. Exactly. So um, we cannot really expect um, single media events to shift um, uh, the electorate um, significantly. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there was too big. This is a historic uh, campaign. This is a historic election. There have been at least two uh, large atypical, uh, potentially um, uh, changing uh, events, such as the attack, the assassination attempt, and uh, the debate. And we didn't see that many shifts. Um, there's still, I mean, both actually worked in favor of Trump, and he's, uh, uh, he's the one more likely to win this election. And obviously, now we're seeing uh, another event, um, the resignation of uh, Joe Biden and this actually helps the Democrats because it enables them to set the agenda uh, they are in the spotlight now everybody's looking at them what's going to happen there's a certain element of drama which is something that Trump is very good at um, using in his campaigns basically his campaigns are large shows he doesn't he, he doesn't really spend a lot of time discussing um, uh, issues and what is happening now is uh, is very beneficial to the Democratic Party because mm -hmm. um, what we're seeing is a lot of um, or less predict predictability basically predictability is gone we were all worried that this was going to be another Biden Trump campaign Right. Um, Precisely. Now, it, is, is it a blow to, to Donald Trump's plans? Because now, obviously, he has to reorientate all his campaign from uh, strictly attacking Joe Biden to something totally different. There's, 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 there's no clear plan for, for, for what happened, right? Right. This is uh, uh, basically campaigns are built around the, uh, the, uh, the opponents normally the candidate and the opponent and here the opponent for trump changed and um we'll see how the debates 
um, happened. There was there was uh, normally there are three debates in a campaign. This year there was going to be only two for some reason. The first one happened uh, atypically before uh, the candidates were nominated, and now one of the candidates is replaced. And actually, Kamala Harris could be an interesting debater for Trump because she's uh, she marks such a stark contrast to him. She's an entirely different person, basically in all uh, respects. And there are certain issues that could be uh, interesting dividing lines between the two. One being obviously abortion, uh, more so maybe with Vance, who has a very strict conservative take on abortion, but she was not going to debate him because um, presidents or candidates for presidency debate each other and candidates for vice president. And here we don't have the candidate for vice president on the Democratic side yet. Uh, debate as well. But this is one dividing line that is very obviously important, especially her being a woman. So she can attract a lot of the female vote, a lot of the minority, the ethnic minority vote, uh, African Americans or Asians, and especially African Americans and Latinos and young voters have actually... And young voters. And that's, and that's where the Democratic Party was was bleeding now, right? Because uh, of, right. Uh, of, of um, well, some hiccups. In, uh, in Joe Biden's uh, campaign. But as you mentioned, there's still uh, no uh, candidate for uh, Kamala Harris's VP, because we, we all guess it will be eventually uh, Kamala uh, Harris. So who do you think could it be? Well, I think it's too early to, 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 to name any names. There's obviously a, a couple of them. They're usually um, either state senators or uh, especially for states that are battlegrounds people with uh, experience, people who have won um, elections before, uh, it would probably make sense for her to go for the center. So uh, I would say um, a young uh, middle-aged uh, uh, man, uh, it, it's okay. <laughs> her being a, a, a triple minority, it would make sense. She has to go for the center now because she already has the support of all the, um, most of the minorities that vote typically for the Democratic Party. Uh, but also the issues at hand, and we can already see Trump wondering or hesitating uh, about whether he was going to take part in this debate that is already uh, planned for September. And he he calls her um, an easy target, a weak candidate, but I think he's worried that um, she might actually be much stronger than uh, Joe Biden, especially in a debate. Also, her being with her background, her being an attorney, she was attorney, district attorney of San Francisco and then a attorney general of California, and him being uh, facing charges, several mm -hmm. charges across the US, I think it could be an interesting uh, debate where she could go into a lot of detail uh, regarding his um, past, his charges, and uh, it looks like he's afraid uh, or, or at least hesitating whether to debate or not. Although the American tradition is to debate. There were only since the, the first debate in 1960, only three debates were skipped. After this first one, candidates were afraid to, to debate, to appear on television. But then, since then, basically, since 76, in every election there have been debates. It is a, the very essence of, of the American uh, democracy. Now, I'd like to refer to, uh, to something we, we, we started with. Now, uh, how real is the threat highlighted by Polish Foreign Minister Radosław Sikorski um, that the Kremlin may attempt to promote isolationism in the, the US, which may ultimately uh, lead to Americans losing interest in opposing uh, Russia's imperialism in Europe? Well, um, obviously, I, I expect actually Kamala Harris to uh, to be a um, to continue um, the, the typically American uh, policy um, that we've seen basically since the end of the Second World War. Uh, Trump was um, a bit of a um, uh, there was there was a lot of unpredictability on his part, but I think he was using this as a, um, who was doing this un uh, consciously, who was using mm -hmm. this as a, as a device, as a campaign device, as a persuasion device. Um, and I think generally speaking, uh, Kamala Harris is much more um, predictable here, and she's a better choice 
uh, for Europe, for NATO, for all the allies. And um, probably, mm, this is not certain, but there are a lot of indications that, that this might be true, that Putin would rather see Trump uh, as the next president. Um, with Trump, there is a higher danger of the U.S. Uh, becoming more isolationist, unlike it's been since the end of the Second World War, not as isolationist as it was at the beginning of the United States as a state. Back then, the U.S. basically uh, tried to um, refrain from having uh, allies and just focus on having good business relations, trade relations with um, all the countries, uh, uh, like uh, George Washington uh, advised in his farewell address. But since then, basically since the Second World War, the U.S. has been a much more active a global power, um, which was obviously seen very differently in Latin America than in uh, Eastern Europe. And here, we actually stand for the U.S. being a, an active global, or at least transatlantic, power. But at the same time, we're aware of this necessity, especially on the part of the U.S., to make this pivot mm. uh, to the Pacific. So there's no no going back to the 19th century. But then again, it's politics. It's un. Predictable. Uh, Thomas Fudowski, Associate Professor at the University of Economics and Human Sciences in Warsaw, who was our um, uh, guest this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching and stay with us for much more here on TVP World.